this is Kevin Chaudhary. Today I am going to speak about damage stability. What is damage stability? So uh, let us first understand what is stability. Stability is the ability of a ship to come back to upright equilibrium when disturbed by external forces. Well, there are several equilibriums. We are talking about upright equilibrium. The capability of the ship to come back to upright equilibrium is judged by the GZ curve as we have seen before. Now, what is damage stability? Damage stability is the stability in the damage condition. By damage, what we mean is the damage underwater. The underwater part of the hull is breached or damaged so that the water comes in and the stability changes. Change of stability thereby or the new stability is called damaged stability. Sometimes they have uh, this term called impaired stability. That is, in whatever situation the stability of the ship is affected, would be called impaired stability. Now, talking about the damage stability, we need to do certain calculations to find out what is the stability of the ship, what is the GM of the ship, what will be the sinkage, what will be the freeboard disc trim, etc. So, uh, uh, to start with, let us uh, understand that there are two different ways of calculating the damage stability. One is constant displacement method. It is also called intact underwater volume method or loss of buoyancy method. Now, uh, in this method, there are certain assumptions and then there is other method called US Coast Guard method or added weight method. Added weight method is quite like uh, intact stability calculations. So what happens in a constant displacement method? The assumption is if to start with the compartment to be damaged, is void of liquid which means that it is either empty or it has got some dry rigid cargo which will not mix and dissolve with water so dry rigid cargo or empty compartment when it gets damaged the displacement of the ship is unchanged so constant displacement method believes or assumes that there is no change of displacement and therefore kg and lcg when the ship is damaged the underwater is underwater portion of the ship is breached this also uh, means that if the displacement is not changing then the underwater volume the buoyancy of the underwater volume or rather the underwater volume which is supporting this displacement also should not be changing so we say that the intact underwater volume remains unchanged right so uh, what happens basically is there is loss of buoyancy underwater and this loss of buoyancy is replenished from higher areas typically at water level so what is known as reserve buoyancy gets consumed so loss of buoyancy whatever is the loss in buoyancy is replenished by the reserved areas of the ship the sink is therefore is loss of buoyancy underwater and replenishment of the buoyancy from top and the sink is very very accurately is given by the formula sinkage is equal to loss buoyancy upon intact water plane area by the way this is the most important gift given by this constant displacement method to a mariner a mariner right at the beginning of the damage he can say if the pumping out arrangements fail if we are not able to pump out with this damage we are going to reach this draft so much is going to be the sinkage so much is going to be the freeboard Right in the beginning with the help of this formula, the calculation, well the sinkage calculations are so accurate in constant displacement method that we exactly know whether the ship will founder or not. So that is the importance of this formula. The importance of the formula that is loss buoyancy upon intact water plane area giving sinkage is in the fact that loss buoyancy is taken till the initial water level. And this particular accuracy is not there in added weight method. Added weight method assumes that the amount of water that comes in the compartment is like cargo loaded. So if we take in the water according to the previous water line in the compartment, the ship increases her draft, she sinks and in the further sunk condition, there is some extra portion of the hold that goes underwater. So we allow for that much water that is added on the ship and successively in three four calculations we may be able to get the proper sinkage 
So sinkage is not directly available as you will get in the constant displacement method. Let us now, I think, try and compare these two methods. That is a constant displacement method and added weight method. Constant displacement method, once again, if the compartment to be damaged is void in liquid, the displacement kg and LCG don't change. Whereas in added weight method, which is quite like uh, intact stability calculations, the incoming water is used like the weight that is added or the mass that is added on the ship. And we find out the sinkage by W upon 100 TPC method. Well, well, constant displacement method is fantastic for finding out sinkage and the GM, which is recognized by most of the damage stability criteria. Added weight method becomes simpler in finding out the list and trim. Where in constant displacement method, we allow for three losses, that is loss of buoyancy, loss of water plane area, loss of moment of inertia, right? In added weight method, what happens is we don't allow for loss of moment of inertia or water plane area, right? But where in constant displacement method, we do not allow for free surface. In added weight method, we allow for free surface. So there are some differences. In some areas, the added weight method is simpler. In some areas, the constant displacement method is easier. Now, one wonders how can the displacement be constant when the damage occurs to the ship. To understand constant displacement method, let us say there is a barge and there are these five compartments in the barge. There's the middle compartment and this barge is floating in the water and it is probably suspended by a weighing balance. Right? Then what happens is we cut open the bottom. We open the bottom so that the water is able to come in and as the water comes in, this is the new draft. So what constant displacement method says, this compartment being empty, we can apply constant displacement uh, method here. It says that now new intact underwater volume, which is this one up to the new water line, is actually equal to the old underwater volume, old underwater intact volume before the damage. And that is one reason we say that because underwater volume is not changed, the intact underwater volume is not changed, the displacement is also not changed, right? Another thing, now when we have opened these gates at the bottom, the water that has entered the ship is not the property of the ship. It is not part and parcel of the ship. It does not cause any weight on the ship. This is the property of the sea. It does not cause any weight on the ship. So if it does not cause any weight on the ship and the weight which was shown by the balance is actually the weight of the steel part of the ship, which has not changed. So it clearly shows that the displacement has not changed. The displacement has not changed, then KG and LCG also would not change. And displacement has not changed. It also means that intact part of the underwater volume does not change. That is constant displacement principle. Now, as I said, as I said, constant displacement method talks about three kinds of losses. One is loss of buoyancy, loss of water plane area, and loss of moment of inertia. For example, if we look at the water plane area of this ship, where this middle compartment is damaged, then it is like earlier we had the total water plane area found by length into breadth. Now, that length into breadth has to be subtracted by this area, which is the area of the compartment. So there is loss of area. There is loss of area and there is loss of moment of inertia, whether you take the moment of inertia about four and a half line or a third ship line. There is loss of moment of inertia, right? So in all the calculations, we can say that present value is total value minus loss value. For example, if I want to find out the present uh, moment of inertia, I would say it is total moment of inertia, that is LB cube by 12. This lost moment of inertia which is small l into b cube by 12, right? As I was saying, there are three losses associated with the constant displacement calculation. At any stage, if I want to find out what is the present residual value, I would say total value minus lost value is equal to present value. And also, if I say there are three kinds of losses, every loss is multiplied with the permeability. Permeability goes with the loss. Suppose the permeability is 80%. 
Now the compartment that was damaged was you know, 10 meter by 20 meters. So 200 meter square has to be multiplied by permeability. Suppose permeability is 80 percent. So 200 multiplied by 0.8 will give you 160. So we have actually lost 160 meter square of the area and 40 meter square still remains intact. So whether it is loss of buoyancy or it is loss of area, water plane area or it is loss of moment of inertia. All the losses have to be multiplied with the permeability. When we are talking about loss of water plane area or loss of moment of inertia, we need to look at the final water line because these losses are checked at the final water line. It means that if the damage has not reached the final water line, damage remains below the final water line. Say for example, the damage to a double bottom tank. Double bottom tank has got a tank top above the double bottom. If the tank top is intact, the damage remains below the tank top. It does not reach the water line. Invariably, if the damage does not reach the final water line, we can say with the confidence that the stability after the damage would be the improved stability. So mariners must know that any damage which does not reach the final water line is likely to increase the stability.